Hello, and welcome to Children's Church. We've been talking about a letter that Paul wrote to the Galatians. He wanted them and us to live like Jesus. Now, we're all human beings. We have sin in our lives because Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, and that gave us, all human beings, a sin nature. Uh, we do things wrong all the time unless we let the Holy Spirit lead us. He will show us what's right and what's wrong. Sin wants to draw us away and lead us to do the wrong thing. The Holy Spirit wants to guide us to do the right thing. The sin nature inside each one of us leads to every bad thing you can think of. Uh, people lie, they cheat, they are disobedient to their parents. Uh, maybe they talk back when they shouldn't. Uh, we do things that we know not to do because that sin is drawing us away. But Paul tells us in Galatians 5.21, that if we live like this, we will not inherit the kingdom of God. We will not go to heaven. But God's Holy Spirit lives inside our hearts. And His Holy Spirit wants to lead us in the right way. And to do the godly thing. The right thing is the godly thing. Now, the very next verse says... The fruit of the Spirit is, and it gives us a list, the fruit of the Spirit is the evidence that the Holy Spirit is directing our lives. The things that He shows us to do are the right things to do. So let's look at the list. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's found in Galatians 5.22. We're going to be going through this again. Okay. These things are evidence. That means when people look at us, do they see love? Do they see joy in our lives? Do they see patience? Do they see all of these things? When they do, that's evidence that those things are living inside us, that the Holy Spirit is there to help us to guide and do those things. And if they're not in our lives, then we are disappointing God because we're not following Him. We're not showing Him to other people. When we ask Jesus into our hearts, we belong to Him. The sinful nature we got from Adam and Eve, he hung on the cross with him. And when we ask him into our hearts, he takes that away from us. It's not that we don't do wrong things, but he helps to guide us to do the right thing, and he forgives us when we do the wrong thing. He fills us with his nature. And Paul says that when we live by the Holy Spirit, we need to keep in line with the Holy Spirit and let Him guide us. Sometimes that's not always easy. Sometimes we don't listen very well. But we can help other people. We can pray for them. We can encourage them. We're all in this together. And as children of God, we work together. We help each other. That's part of of who we are as Christians. And we are not to compare ourselves to other people and not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought. And, and we don't think things like, well, I would never do what so-and-so is doing or, oh my goodness, I, you would never see me doing that. That's not what God's talking about. That is making us self-righteous puffing ourselves up. And that's not what it says here. 
That's not what any of these things are. We can't blame other people either. We choose to do the wrong thing. We cannot blame other people for our choices. And it's easy to say, well, so-and-so made me or this happened and, and we make excuses. God knows better and God doesn't accept excuses from us. Paul says we reap what we sow. Well, that's a farming term. If a farmer goes out and plants wheat, he's going to harvest wheat. If he goes out and plants corn, he's going to harvest corn. He doesn't plant corn and harvest barley. It doesn't work that way. And our lives are the same way. If we sow good seeds, if we do good things, we're going to reap good things. If we sow bad things, we're going to reap bad things. We're accountable for what we do. We're accountable for what we say. And God knows. Maybe we can make excuses to other people, but not to God. He knows. He knows our hearts and he knows our minds. Paul says we are not to get tired of doing good things because at the proper time, we will reap and harvest what we have sown. Well, a farmer doesn't go out one day and plant wheat and then expect to go out the very next day and reap a harvest of wheat. It doesn't work that way. He plants the seeds. The seeds have time to grow and they grow and grow and then they mature. And at the proper time, then he reaps the harvest. And it's the same way with us. We have to wait for the, for the crops to ripen. We have to wait uh, for the opportunities to do all the good we can, and later on, we'll get the benefits from that. We will be rewarded as God's people by doing the good things that He wants us to do. I want us to look at our memory verse a little bit different this time. The fruit of the Spirit is, the first one says, love. Now, to me, a strawberry reminds me of love. It's red, and it's kind of shaped like a heart. So when I think of love, I think of a strawberry. And here's a big old strawberry. That's to remind us of love. God's love for us and our love to and for other people. The next thing is joy. Well, when I think of joy, I think of an orange. An orange is big and juicy, and it just, uh, it, it fills my heart with joy. And also, when I think of joy, I think of, Jesus and others and you. We put Jesus first, then we put others ahead of us, and then we come last if we're doing it in the right order. So joy and oranges kind of stick together in my brain. They are juicy and fresh. We'll put that one up. The next thing is peace. I'm using cherries to think about peace. Now, for more than one reason. Cherries are sweet to our taste. They can be with, combined with lots of other fruits and in different desserts. They get along well with others. That's a good thing. And the little pit hidden inside the cherry is kind of like God's peace that's hidden down in our hearts. So when I think of cherries, I think of peace. Love, strawberry, joy, orange, cherries, peace. Okay. The next thing on our list 
is patience. Patience. I think of a pair when I think of patience. Because pears have to very patiently grow. They have to ripen. And then they're picked. And then they're washed. And then they're peeled. And then the seeds are taken out. And then we can eat them. We have to be patient to get along with pears. Okay. The next one is kindness. Well, I think of grapes when I think of kindness, and there's a reason for that. Now, some grapes are green and some are purple. Some of them are kind of red. But they come in a bunch, and they're meant to be shared. Well, sharing is an act of kindness. So when I think of grapes, I think of kindness, because we can share lots of things with people, not just grapes. Our next word is goodness. Well, something that is really, really good for you is a banana. That's what makes me think of goodness. Bananas are good for us, and they remind us of the goodness of God in us. So, when I think of goodness, I think of bananas. So we have strawberry for love, orange for joy, cherries for peace, pear for patience, grapes for kindness, banana for goodness. But we're not done. The next thing we have is faithfulness. When I think of a watermelon, oops, I hold it up like this, it reminds me of a rainbow. Not exactly like a rainbow, but it's kind of like a rainbow. And that shows God's faithfulness to us. Remember that he put the rainbow in the sky? And it was a promise to us and to the whole earth forever that he would never bring a flood that would cover the earth again. That's a promise. God is faithful. And a slice of watermelon, because it looks like a rainbow, reminds us of God's faithfulness to us and our need to be faithful to Him. The next thing is a peach. Now, peaches are very soft. And if you don't handle them carefully, they get little bad spots in them. They get bruised. And that reminds me of gentleness. We must be very gentle with peaches so we don't put spots in them. But we have to be gentle with people, too. We have to show tenderness and gentleness with older people, with younger people, with people that are hurting. There are lots of people we need to really be very gentle with. And that brings us to self-control. Now, to me, a red apple is kind of like a stop sign. Saying, uh-oh, watch out, stop. Maybe you're getting a little out of control. Maybe you need to bring it down a little bit. So, an apple is like that stop sign in our heads that says, you know what, you need to settle down. Have you ever heard somebody tell you that? You need to settle down and stop and think and calm yourself. That's self-control bringing yourself under control where somebody else doesn't have to do that for you. Okay, let's look at them one more time. Love is the strawberry. 
It's red and heart shaped. Orange for joy. It's nice and juicy. And remember, this can also stand for Jesus, others, and you. Peace for cherries because they get along so well with others. A pear for patience because it takes a while to grow and get ready for us to eat it. Grapes for kindness because they are something we can share and sharing is an act of kindness. Goodness with bananas because they are really good for us and they show us God's goodness inside of us. Faithfulness with a watermelon, because it reminds us of a rainbow and God's faithfulness to us. Gentleness with a pear, um, excuse me, with a peach, uh, because it's very soft and you have to be very gentle with it. And of course, a red apple for self-control, that little stop sign in our head that reminds us we need to be careful. Just like seeds, we've talked about planting wheat or planting corn, just like seeds have to be hidden down in the earth before they can grow and produce fruit like wheat or corn or whatever, God's Word needs to be hidden in our hearts. That way we can grow in the knowledge of God and produce the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. Let's look at our list and our verse one more time. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5. 22. We'll see you next time.